Okay, well, okay. Today we're looking at 7.2 graphing polynomial functions assignment tutorial. Let's look at question number one. Using a graphing calculator to graph the polynomial function, then use a graph to determine the function's domain, range, and end behavior. Okay? So to graph this, we're going to use Desmos. Or not Desmos, I'm sorry. The Inspire. Okay? So I'm going to go to On, New Documents, No, Add, graph okay and then i'm going to type in x to the ninth power i'm going to go to menu view grid line grid all right now to adjust the window to look just like the window they have i'm going to go to menu window zoom window setting and i'm going to change my min to negative five five change the scale to one negative 10, 10, and 1. Okay, now you can see here, this is your graph. Right, there's our graph. Now our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range is negative infinity to positive infinity. The aim behavior is as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity, meaning when it goes to the right, it goes up. And as, as, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. So that when it goes left, it goes down. Okay. Go ahead and finish up question number one. Now let's take a look at question number two. Okay. Using a graphing calculator to graph the polynomial function, then use the graph to determine the function's domain range and end behavior. Okay. So let's go ahead and graph negative x squared. Now I recommend going to new document, no, every time. So negative x to the fifth I'm gonna you can actually delete that I'm gonna go to menu view grid line grid and then I want my window to be the same so I'm gonna go to menu window zoom window setting and negative five oh if that happens just go to menu window zoom window settings negative five five one negative 10 10 and they're actually counting by two so press okay all right so now you have your graph all right so now the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity and the range is negative infinity to positive infinity the end behavior is as x approaches positive infinity f of x approaches negative infinity so when it goes to the right it goes down as x approaches negative infinity f of x approaches positive infinity so when it goes left it goes up all right, go ahead and finish up question two. All right, let's take a look at question three. Okay, so we're going to graph x to the fourth. Okay, so to do that, I think we can actually just go to tab, put x to the fourth. Okay, and we can go to menu, window zoom, window settings, and the negative five to five is the same. One, uh, negative ten to ten, two, those are all the same. Press OK, so there's your graph. Okay. All right. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is bracket zero to infinity because it starts at zero and goes to infinity. Okay. The end behavior as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. As f of it, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. So basically, when it goes to the right, it goes up. When it goes to the left, it goes up. All right. Let's take a look at question number four. Okay. So let's graph ne x, negative x to the 6. So press tab, delete this, negative x to the 6, press enter, go to menu, window zoom, window settings, and I believe the window is the same scale, so we're good there. All right, and so there's your graph. All right, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is negative infinity to zero brackets. Basically, it's coming from negative infinity and it's stopping at zero. Okay. And behavior as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. As f as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. Okay. All right. Go ahead and finish up question four. All right. Question five. Okay. So we're going to graph question number five. Oh, 
rid of that. There's what we need. So press tab, and we're going to put x. Remember, we have to put the time symbol, parentheses, x plus 1, parentheses, parentheses, x plus 2. And we want to adjust the window, so go to menu, window zoom, window settings. And so this is negative 10 to 10. And then the scale is by 2. And then negative 10 to 10 scales by 2. Press OK. There's your graph. All right. So you can see that it has one local min and one local max, meaning it has two turning points. Okay. And so we would say the function has one local maximum value and the function has one local minimum value. Okay. Let's take a look at the next question. All right. So let's go ahead and graph number six. Okay, so we're going to press tab and we're going to graph it. So parentheses x plus 2 squared parentheses x minus 2 and then x minus 3. Okay, and we're going to go to menu, window zoom, window settings, and let's adjust the window. So negative 10 to 10 counting by 2s and then negative 10 to 30 and we're counting by fives okay so there's our graph all right so you can see here that we have one local min one local max and one global min so we have three turning points okay so the function has one local maximum and the function has one local minimum value and one global minimum value and the reason why it's a global min because it's the lower of the min of values. Okay? All right, go ahead and finish up with that. Let's take a look at question number seven. Okay, so let's graph number seven. All right, so we're going to press tab and we're going to delete this. Negative x times, don't forget the time symbol, parentheses x minus 5 squared okay we're gonna go to menu window zoom one thing you can do is go to zoom standard if you want that's always a good place to start then go to menu window zoom window settings so negative 10 10 and they're counting by twos and then negative 20 to 2 and they're counting by twos all right, so there's our graph. All right, so you can see it has a local max and a local min, so it has two turning points. Okay, and we could say that the function has one local maximum value and one local minimum value. All right, let's take a look at the next question. All right, let's go ahead and graph number eight. Okay, so press tab. And we have negative parentheses x minus 2 parentheses x plus 2 cubed. And what I recommend doing is going to menu, window zoom, zoom standard. Then we want to go to menu, window zoom, window setting. And we have negative 10, 10 counting by 2s. And then negative 12 to 32 and counting by it looks like fours okay so there's our graph all right and let me brighten the screen up a little bit and focus in all right now we can see it has one global max value okay which means it has one turning point this isn't a turning point because it doesn't go from Increasing to decreasing. Here it goes increasing to decreasing, so that's a turning point. Okay, and the function has one global maximum value. All right, go ahead and finish up question eight. All right, let's take a look at nine. Now nine is pretty simple. All we have to do is graph. Okay, so we're going to graph number nine. So I'm going to press tab, delete this, x squared parentheses x minus 3 now I want to go to menu 
window zoom window settings okay now if you see here it kind of looks like C so let's use the window for C so we're going from negative 5 to 5 on the X and here we're going from negative 10 to 10 on the Y okay so let's use this window to see if we have that graph All right so negative 5 to 5 counting by ones and then negative 10 to 10 and we're counting by twos okay so you can see here we have that graph it matches graph C so the answer for that is graph C all right, all right let's take a look at question number 10 okay so it's graph number 10 all right so I'm going to press tab delete this and then I'm going to type in negative parentheses x plus 2 parentheses parentheses x minus 2 parentheses parentheses x minus 1 parentheses. All right. Now I want to adjust the window to match what I think the answer is. So it looks like answer choice C. So on the x we're going from negative 5 to 5. And on the y we're going from negative 30 to 20 counting by looks like by five so let's adjust that window okay so we're going to go to menu window zoom window settings so negative five five to one and then this is negative 30 to 20 and we're counting by fives okay so we can see that that graph matches graph c so there's your answer okay now let's take a look at the next question my right, question 11. Okay, let's graph 11. Okay. So I'm going to press tab. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to type in x times parentheses x plus 2 squared parentheses x minus 2. Okay. And it looks like that it looks like answer choice B but it's just the window so negative 5 to 5 negative 10 to 10 okay so menu window zoom window settings so negative 5 to 5 counting by ones and then this is negative 10 to 10 and we're counting by twos well we can see that we have that graph it matches B so the answer is B All right look at question 12 okay basically we're gonna for number 12 we're gonna graph and find the correct matching graph so let's graph that now okay so press tab going to that's x squared parentheses x plus 3 parentheses parentheses x minus 2 parentheses squared okay now it looks like Enter choice A, but let's adjust the window from negative 5 to 5 and negative 10 to 90. Okay, so let's adjust that now. So menu, window zoom, window settings. So negative 5 to 5, we're good there. And then that's negative 10 to 90, and we're counting by 10s, it looks like. All right, so there it is. There's our graph. We can see it matches enter choice A. So let's move on to the next question. All right. Question 13. To create an open top box out of a sheet of cardboard that is 5 inches long and a 3 inch wide, you make a squared flap of side length x inches in each corner by cutting along one of the flap sides and folding along the other. In the diagram, a solid line segment in the interior of the rectangle indicates a cut, while a dashed line segment indicates a fold. Once you fold up the four sides of the box, you glue each flap to the side it overlaps. To the nearest tenth, Find the value of the x that maximizes the volume of the box. Okay. So step one, the length of the box is 5 minus 2x. The width is 3 minus 2x. And the height is x. We know that the volume is length times width times height. 
which are your dimensions right here. So that's your equation. Okay? The domain is between 0 and 1.5, determined by the constraints of all three dimensions of the box must be positive. Okay? Now we're going to graph the function on a graphing calculator with a viewing window that shows the x-axis from 0 to 1.5 and the y-axis from 0 to 6. Using the graphing calculator, to locate the graph's highest point. So let's first graph this, okay? So whenever you start a new graph, I recommend going to On, New Document, No, Add Graph, and we're going to graph parentheses 5 minus 2x, parentheses 3 minus 2x, parentheses x, and you probably want to put a time symbol right there, all right? And you can delete this. Okay. Now we need to adjust the window using these values 0, 1.5, 0, 0.106, and 1. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're going to go to first menu, view, grid, line grid, menu, window zoom, window settings. Okay, so 0, 1.5, 0, 0.106, one press ok alright now we want to find this maximum value so we're going to go to menu analyze graph we want maximum we're going to click the far right drag notice that once it hits the maximum it stops so we have 0 0.6 and 4.1 So 0 0.6 comma 4.1. Now, we would say that the maximum volume is 4.1 cubic inches when square flap with the side length of 0.6 inch are made in the corners of the sheet of cardboard. All right, let's take a look at the next question. All right. A rectangular piece of sheet metal is rolled out Rolled and riveted to form a circular tube that is open at both ends, as shown. The sheet metal has a perimeter of 34 inches. Each of the two sides of the rectangle that form the two ends of the tube has a length of x inches. But the tube has a circumference of x minus 1 inches because an overlap of 1 inch is needed for the rivets. So first off, we have our rectangle and we have our tube. Okay. So the next part is we're going to enter a volume function for the tube in terms of x. Then to the nearest tenth and to the value x that maximizes the volume of the tube. Step one. The given information is that the width is x and the length is y of the rectangle. Since the perimeter of the rectangle is 34, you know that 2x plus 2y equals 34. Because if this is y, this is y. And if this is x, this is x. So the perimeter is 2x's plus 2y's and that equals 34. Okay, step two. Solve for y. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. That goes away. So then you're left with 2y equals 34 minus 2x. Divide everything by 2. y equals 17 minus x. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next. All right. Step three. Since x minus 1 represents the circumference of the tube and the circumference c equals 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the tube, you know that c equals 2 pi r. Okay. Now, we know that the circumference is x minus 1, so we substitute that in for c. Now, we're going to solve this equation for r. So, all we have to do is divide both sides by 2 pi. Well, anything divided by itself is 1. So r equals x minus 1 divided by 2 pi. Okay. Now, since the tube is... Since the tube is a cylinder with a radius r and height y, the volume of the tube is v equals pi r squared y. 
Well, we know r and we know y, so we're going to substitute r and y into this equation. Okay, so volume equals pi times r, which r is x minus 1 divided by 2 pi squared times y, which is 17 minus x. Okay, well, the volume equals pi times, well, x minus 1 squared is just x minus 1 squared, and that's times 17 minus x. And then 2 pi squared is 4 pi squared. Okay. Well, that means volume equals pi times x minus 1 squared times 17 minus x divided by 4. Pi squared is pi times pi. Well, pi divided by pi is 1, so your volume simplifies to be volume equals x minus 1 squared times 17 minus x divided by 4 pi. Okay? Step 7. Graph v equals 1 divided by 4 pi times x minus 1 squared times 17 minus x in the Inspire. So let's do that now. Okay. So we want to go to on, new document, no, head graph. So we're going to do, and if I do this, I can actually do divide, oh, I'm sorry, control divide. I get the fraction. So then I can put parentheses x minus 1 squared times 17 minus x divided by 4 pi. And I believe the pi symbol can be found not there. Um, just give me a second. I know it's about, ah, it's right there. Pi. Okay. Press enter. We can delete this. We don't need that. Okay. Now we want to adjust the window to 117, 10090, 10. So let's do that now. So, and before we do that, menu, view, grid, line grid. Oop. Menu, window zoom, window settings. So then 117, 1, 0, 90, 10. Press OK. All right, now we want to find the maximum, which is right here. So we're going to go to Menu, Window Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, menu, Analyze Graph, Maximum. Click here, drag across. There we go. So the graph's highest point is 11.7, comma, 48.3. All right. So the graph's highest point is 11.7 comma 48.3. So we can say the tube has a maximum volume of 48 inches when the length of the sides of the rectangle that forms the end of the tube is 11.7 inches. All right. So that should help you with your assignment. So go ahead and finish it up and have a wonderful Wildcat day.